We're going to take a look at some of the fast racing dinghies on offer at the RYA Dinghy Show. So if you've got a need for speed, we're going to find something for you. So I'm here with Andy from the International 14 Class Association. Tell me why people should sail International 14. Well, I, I, mean, I think it's, at the moment, there's a lot of foiling fad going on. Yeah, there's lots of modern modern foilers, but the 14 is still a sort of die-hard skiff. And when you go out and do pursuit races, like the Bloody Mary and, and uh, Tiger Trophy and things like that, you are the fastest real boat out there. So there's obviously loads of different boats out there that I could pick if I wanted to be the fastest yeah. sailor at my club. Why should I choose the International 14? Well, I think because Pollux is a double-hander, uh, so uh, you're sailing with your mate. So there's always a lot of uh, fun experiences, you know, big cap sizes, you know, top boat speeds, you know, hitting 25 plus knots. The double-handed aspect is one of the main reasons, because you can then experience it with someone. Perfect. And how much would I need to spend if I wanted to jump into a 14 now? I know that there's a bit of a, a difference in price. Uh, our, our boat's a pretty old boat. Uh, we, we were third at the Euros this year. Uh, and, and we picked it up for sort of uh, a little under, little under ten grand, um, and that was a right front of the fleet boat. And you can pick up some some older designs from that, which uh, you can pick them up for very little money now. Um, but you can also now Ovington are uh, producing this sort of one design type Beaker Six, which is just won the world this year in Perth. Well, you can buy a full boat package for 25k, uh, which is kind of comparable levels to your 49er. Um, or you can uh, you can buy just the hull only for, for £12,000 and then you can add your own rig and your own foils to suit whatever you, whatever your sort of weight is and your, your background of sailing is. Brilliant. And what would you say the top speed that a 14 can reach? <laughs> I think the world's this year in Perth, I think there was 26 and a half. So it's pretty fast then? Pretty fast, yeah. Especially when you're that close to the water? Yeah, yeah it's pretty fast, especially when you occasionally might do a pitch pole. So I'm here with Duncan and he's going to tell us a little bit more about the Wasp. Morning. Uh, the Wasp, one design foiler, uh, relatively cheap, it's about £11,000. Um, it's got retractable foils, it's kind of like a detuned moth, so it's simplified, but the real beauty of it is it's one design, so they're all exactly the same. And how hard do I have to hike upwind? The harder you hike, the faster you go. <laughs> I thought you were going to say that. Uh, do you know the top speeds of this boat um, downwind? Uh, at the moment, my top speed is about 22, but there are people in New Zealand who have clocks at 27. Okay, so pretty fast then. Yeah, you're going to hold on. So what is it that sets the wasp aside from all the other boats here at the dinghy show? The key, the most obvious thing really is, is the foils, okay? So it actually, it's on hydrofoils, it pops up out of the water. So when you're sailing it and you're sitting here on, on the tramp, you're going to be a metre, metre and a half out of the water. And when you look at the foils, there's going to be about that much of the foils still in the water. So with that, little amount of contact with the water, the, the drag reduces so the boat will actually go significantly quicker. So we've been looking at uh, how would I become the fastest sailor in my club. Do you think that if someone bought a wasp they'd guarantee to be the fastest? This is pretty quick. I mean for an average club sailor this is going to keep everybody pretty excited. So in terms of the level of sailor that you have to be to jump into a wasp, do you have to be an expert already? Uh, no. We have 13, 14 year old sailors stepping out of oppies straight into these with a smaller rig and, and, and picking up instantly. Um, some of the best sailors that have come into the Wasps have come from 29ers, crews, understanding that balance and trim side of things. You don't need to be an expert. If you can sail on a straight line and keep the boat flat, then this, you'll be fine. Brilliant. Thank you very much. I'm here with Jamie, who is a Musto Skiff sailor, and he's going to tell us what's great about the Musto Skiff. Yeah, um, afternoon. Um, I've been in the skiff since 2009 um, and I've had a really good time with that boat yeah, but over, over the course of that, that time. Like the first two years, I spent a lot of time learning how to sail it. On my own at Datchet Water, I've got a few guys to come and join me, ended up with 15 boats and a fast learning curve. There's obviously a whole bunch of boats you could buy if you were interested in being the fastest sailor in your sailing club. What is it that makes the Musto skiff the perfect choice? The combination of fun, reliability of builds, um, Proximity. Well, I guess my, my friends are involved with it as well, definitely helps. And there's lots of boats out there to choose from, but it's just about finding the right one for you, challenging yourself to, to get to the top of that fleet if you can. And how much would one of these cost? I think you're looking at about maybe £13,000 for, for a new one there, but you can, I met a guy yesterday who bought one of, the, one of the first ones for two and a half grand. So 
and because the boat's so well put together, they don't tend to degrade too much over that time. They're, they're, they're still competitive. You get boats that are 10 years old winning nationals, for example. So I think you're probably looking about six to seven thousand pounds for a boat that can win the nationals. And ultimately, you just look, look after your, your foils and your sails, and you, and you can go quick. Do you know what the top speed of a Musto skiff so far is? The 20 knots is, is gonna, what, what guys are regularly getting on their on their, on their GPS devices. It's not bad for a single hander, is it? It's uh, not. It's a buzz. It's a real buzz. Yeah, it's good fun. It's not a moth, but it's a uh, it's not the fastest thing otherwise. No, that sounds great. Thank you very much. Thank you. I'm here with Justin from the GP14 Class Association. So just tell us a little bit about the boat we've got here. Um, yeah, so what we've got here is a GP14. Technically, if you've got this old boat here, which is 70 year old, if you had this boat, put some modern fittings on it, uh, put some new sails on it, uh, it technically should be as fast as a brand new boat. Our World Championship was won by a 15 year old boat, I believe, a 15, 16 year old boat this year. So it's, uh, again, it's a testament to sort of, you don't have to spend a fortune on a brand new boat to be competitive. Amazing, and so how much should a new GP14 or a secondhand GP14 set you back? So you can get on the water sailing 500 pounds, as cheap as, with trailers and sails and all sorts. Aside from that, if you want to be a brand new boat, probably 14 to 15,000. My boat, which I sail competitively, I think I paid four grand for it, you know, and I've, I've got some decent sales on it. So for that kind of investment, you can you can sail, you know, in, in the gold fleet, you know, at top level. Oh, great. And there's obviously a lot of boats quite similar to this on the market. What is it that you think sets the GP14s apart from the rest? I think it's got to be the community probably around the boat itself as well. So as an association, we, we do as much as we can to give as, as much value to someone who buys these boats in terms of helping people with um, restoring old ones like this. There's so much advice available that, that we all get together and then you might start off wanting to cruise, but if you might want to start getting into the racing, we've got one of the best and most competitive racing fleets out there, which travel all over the country uh, and internationally as well. I mean, our next World Championships coming up is going to be in Sri Lanka. Um, we were in Barbados a few years back, you know, we, we, so we are getting around and it does make the class a bit more intriguing as well. Brilliant. Well, I'm out to get myself to Sri Lanka for the next world. So we're coming to the end of the RWA dinghy show. We've had a look at four really fast, high-performance boats. If you've got the need for speed, hopefully we've found something for you.